Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hectic Homestead. Last episode we talked about the footers, kind of gave you a rundown of how those went and how the, the former drain footer worked. This episode, as you can see behind me, we have block. The, the basement walls are blocked in, the, the cores are filled, rebar's in, everything looks good. It's, a, it's progress, things are moving along. We're going to uh, go ahead and talk to you about how they filled them, what the uh, code is for our area for rebar and uh, anchor bolts, and kind of give you a, a layout of our, our basement walls here. Well, everyone, before we get into the, the basement block there, got some sad news to share with you out here on the homestead. Over the past 10 days, we went from 20 chickens, we're now down to four. Three hens and one rooster. Uh, the rooster we had since we bought the property, episode one, go check it out. He came with the property, so we got him some hens. But yeah, the last 10 days we're down 20 chickens. I ended up trapping and catching a coon a couple nights ago. Got called out of town for work, so I didn't get the trap set overnight. Didn't want to catch, the neighbor has some cats. Didn't want to catch one of the cats using uh, cat food as bait in a box trap, so it wouldn't have hurt the cat. But I just don't want to catch neighbor's cats. It's not what I'm out for. But uh, get home today, and as you can see, fresh coon tracks. These would have been either from yesterday or the day before, since that's when we got the rain. So there's still another coon. We uh, had 10 left the other day whenever I caught that coon. I was hoping it was only that one. But where there's one coon, there's many more. So now we're down to four chickens and still a coon coming in the barn. So. Gotta get the trap set up. Hopefully catch the last culprit or the rest of the culprits. I'll probably just keep this trap set for a few days and keep resetting it as I catch catch these coons. That way we keep them out of here. Okay, enough of the negative. Let's get into some positives. So being as they already poured the slab, as you can see, we're gonna do a, a talking about the basement walls here and the slab all in one video. Also, we'll go ahead and touch on this footer here. It's underwater, they got quite a bit of rain today. As you can see, they got done troweling everything and then uh, the rain came through. It downpoured for all of five minutes, but it dropped about an inch of rain on the pad right after they were done troweling, so. They ended up having to squeegee it all out, retrialing the whole, the whole uh, basement again. It's been a long weekend, a long weekend. Luckily I had the weekend off, so I was able to come out and give a hand when I could. Did a lot of work as far as like digging this footer out. As you can see, it's a mess. The rain started washing in the sides, but there's about two foot of concrete for a footer down in there. And what this footer is for, we're gonna have the French doors here. We don't want any frost to get under the footer here or else it'll heave that footer. So by putting the footer out here and pouring, you know, I'll end up laying some block in here. This, we'll go over that, how to lay the block in another video. But anyway, there'll eventually be a concrete slab laid here and that's gonna protect this area of the footer for the basement against frost heaving. So let's hop over here, take a look inside. So that's finished basement floor. They poured this about, uh, I think the truck pulled out around 11.30 this morning. 
and it is now 7.30 at night. So, looks good. Whole way around, whole floor is kind of tapered towards the French doors. As you can see, there's no drain in here. No drain. You can see how wet it was, you know. This discoloration, as it dries out and cures more, you won't see that, and get in here, sweep it up real good. But everything is tapered to the, uh, the doorway there. There's a ground rod coming through the footer. Pockets, I have to cut them out a little bit bigger for the support column. Two windows in the back, one on the side with the French doors, two windows in the front, and then two on the right side. Now our plans did not show windows here. Uh, that was a mess up on the block layer side, but uh, you know, we'll work with it. We did not want windows on this side, simply because we we're gonna have a garage over there and eventually you know, have it attached, but it's no big deal. Our layout will still allow for a door and a corridor. You just have have the window there, so you won't have as you know big of a walkthrough area. Which I'm not very picky. I don't make a big deal over little stuff. That's going to be just fine. It's going to allow more airflow, make the basement you know not stink and smell. But uh, yeah, that's the basement here. Let's go into them laying block, take you through the process, and I'll show you, if you stick around, a $500 mistake that I made. Playing on equipment's fun, but it can be costly. So we're back over here to the block. They have their mixing station set up here. I've been out of town for work the last couple days. They started the project of blocking yesterday. They got a, quite a bit done. There's a couple photos here. Uh, it wasn't here, as I mentioned, I was out of town for work. So my girlfriend snapped these and sent them to me. And it looks pretty good. Anyway, since yesterday, they only got two courses up on the front side of the house here because they uh, run out of block. The supplier couldn't get him any more block until later today. And as you can see, it's here now. So luckily, we got that out here. Also, the lintel for over the French doors over here, it's in, so that's good. The block we're using are 10 inch block, which means that they're eight inches tall, 10 inches deep, and 16 inches wide. So three of these block will make four foot, just like your studs, 16 on center. So here to the right, this is where a French door will be to walk into the basement. You have four foot to the corner there. We have the lintel. The lintel will go over top of the French doors here. One thing I noticed John's using our corner block. Some people, they'll just take your block, line them up like this, call it good. You know, obviously mortaring them in between. As you can see, there's not much surface contact. So he's using these cornerstone. Here's one there. We'll head over to the corner and actually show you on how it would lay out. So you have all this surface contact here and still smooth face on the corner. That's what you want. You want them good cornerstones. You don't want uh, to anyone to cheap out. So make sure you talk to your contractor, whoever you have doing the work. Make sure they're, they're taking the extra step. Also, some guys will take anywhere they need a half a block. They'll just take a block and break it in half, which is fine, it works. Instead of doing that, John has these thicker block you can see the, the wall thickness is a lot thicker than the other, the standard block and they're half block so he doesn't have to break, he doesn't have to, to waste block. 
So that's all good. So we're gonna get up, walk around the perimeter here, and uh, talk about that. So right now, he has seven courses done on these two walls. This is the front of the house. As you can see, here's the front yard, the road, well, everything out in the front there. And that's the right side over yonder. Seven courses. He's uh, just over halfway done with these two walls. We're going 13 courses. A course is a row of blocks running horizontally. So 13 courses will give you an just over eight foot. So then we're eight inch tall block. 13 courses will give you eight foot, eight inches, roughly finished basement ceiling. But anytime you take plumbing or electric and hang it on the bottom side of your floor joists, you're going to lose ceiling space. So you always add that extra course. Well, you don't always. If you choose to, you add that extra course. That way you can finish your ceiling height in the basement at eight foot. So we're going with TGI joists on this. And uh, we will end up with a finished ceiling height taller than eight foot because I'll be able to run everything through the joists. But that's for a future video. This is block. So as mentioned, this is day two. I wasn't out here due to work. Wasn't out here yesterday due to work. So I didn't get any footage of them in action. Tomorrow should be a short day at work, hopefully. And I'm hoping to get out here before they get finished. He's expecting to have this done tomorrow, just the block work. So hopefully I can get out here, get my hands dirty with them, get some footage for you guys that we can follow along keep you interested I know it's boring not seeing the action and just hearing me talk about it but hey this is life busy working out of town trying to do what I can do but trying to keep you guys interested I want you to keep me interested by going down to the bottom hitting that like button hitting that subscribe button so you can see all the videos I upload and by hitting that bell icon you'll be notified every time I upload a video that way you guys can stay along for the journey. You don't miss anything. And uh, I'm gonna try to get out here tomorrow and uh, get some footage. So until tomorrow, y'all have a good one. And it's now tomorrow. Well, I ended up working later than expected, so I did not get out to the property in time to get any footage of them laying block. Got these couple photos here. They have a few block left on the backside before they were done today. And then tomorrow, they're going to do the left and right side of the house. Uh, tomorrow will be Friday, and they plan on pouring the slab on Monday. So over the weekend here, I got a mini excavator and plan on doing a lot of grading and moving material, as well as digging out for the frost footer and putting some rock in the basement and getting that tamped in for these guys to be ready for the slab. So that's going to be it for this episode. This will be part one of a two-part series. I was expecting to be able to separate these by talking about them blocking and then the slab. But the way the videos got intermingled and twisted and I wasn't able to get certain parts until the slab was poured, we're just going to do it this way. I'm trying to keep it to where it does not look all chopped up and kind of making it seamless. So if it's a little choppy to you, my apologies. But in the next episode, we'll talk about the slab, pouring the cores, the rebar, the anchor bolts so stay tuned for the next episode and if you like this content and you want to follow along join us go ahead and hit that like button subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification icon so that you get notified every time we upload a video and we'll see you on the next one